Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about arterial pressure monitoring. And so basically, arterial pressure monitoring, it's, it's a little catheter that's inserted into an artery. Um, you may have heard of the term art line or a line, and it's the same thing. It's just a catheter that's inserted into an artery to help monitor the arterial blood pressure. It can also be used to draw blood gases or just typical labs that you need to send down. That way the patient doesn't get stuck. Um, it is usually inserted by an advanced practice provider, usually a doctor or a nurse practitioner, um, CRNA, anesthesiologist. Typically nurses are not able or allowed to insert art lines. Again, depending on facility, but for the most part. Um, it is usually placed um, in an arterial artery. Most common one is the radial artery. Sometimes you can do the femoral artery, um, but the radial one is just more practical. And again, it measures the blood pressure, just like a regular blood pressure, systolic blood pressure. Um, you're looking for 80 to 100 or 110. And then diastolic, you're looking for 60 to 80. It, it should still be about the same. Um, it also measures a very important factor, the mean arterial pressure. If you've heard of the mean arterial pressure, that is the pressure needed and the minimum pressure required to perfuse organs. And um, so this is a very, very important number because you have got to keep this greater than 65. And if it's at least 65, then you know that organs are being perfused. If it's less than that, we don't have enough blood flow, enough output. It's not getting to the vital organs that need blood flow. Um, an easy way to calculate the MAP is your diastolic blood pressure times two, and then you add your systolic and you divide it by three. So let's do an example really quickly. If I have a patient with a blood pressure of 100 over 60, I'm going to do my systolic times two, which is 120, and I add my assist, I'm sorry, diastolic times two, which is 120, and then I'm going to add my systolic, I'm going to say it again because I don't know if I said it right, my diastolic times 2, and it's 120, and then I'm going to add my systolic of 100, so I get 220. I divide that by 3, so my mean arterial blood pressure is 73. So this is good. If I were to have a patient with a mean arterial blood pressure of 50, it means that his their organs are not perfusing. I need to get this number higher because their blood pressure is probably maybe 70s over 40s, just hypothetically. So if, I'm, if they're on pressors, I need to get this number up so that, again, I know that I'm perfusing vital organs. So a little bit more about Artline. Um, why are they, why do people have them? What's the indication? So usually they're done for hemodynamically unstable patients. Um, people who are in vasopressors that need titration because their pressures are low and you just need to stay on it, or uh, surgical patients. In the EP lab, we put in art lines for patients who are going to have ablations and they go to recovery with them so they can monitor them. Um, but usually you don't see art lines on the floor. It, it's usually for um, unstable patients. So as far as an art line goes, if you've these two things, you got to make sure that they are there, they're present. You always got to check them when you have a patient with an art line. So here's my patient. Yes, I know he's got a big arm, big legs. And here's his hand. And so here is his radial artery. So if an art line is inserted in here, it's like a catheter, kind of like an IV catheter, and it's inserted into the radial artery and it's got tubing that is attached. This is a pole. It's attached to a transducer connected to some cable so I can see it on my monitor. This transducer needs to be at the phlebostatic access level. What that means is here's the patient's heart. And so it would be at the level of the fourth intercostal space where the right atrium would be. So if my patient's right atrium is right here, I need to make sure that my transducer is leveled. So if it's not, I would need to bring it down a little bit or bring it up a little bit because that can alter my blood pressure readings. It has to be leveled again with the phlebostatic access level 
and it, which is approximately where the right atrium would be, it needs to be leveled in order to get accurate blood pressure readings. So if you ever have a pe blood pressure who has an art line and they're sitting up to the chair, that's great. Just make sure that that transducer is leveled to where it needs to be so that your blood pressure readings are accurate. Um, another thing that you got to make sure that is there is an SpO2 on the same hand. If they have um, the radial artery, the right radial artery where the art line is, you usually you either put it on the index finger or, or the thumb. And what that does is it just makes sure that the ulnar artery is providing the perfusion that the hand needs so that it's still getting blood supply. And remember that an SpO2 is how you monitor the sats. So you'll see the saturation, hopefully, of 98%, and you'll see your waveform. And that's how you know that the ulnar artery and that the radial artery is not occluded and that the ulnar artery is still providing the blood flow to the hand. So you have to have an SpO2 on the hand that has an art line. So now let's talk about the... Um, let's talk about the waveforms of the art line. I'm going to try to draw this to the best of my ability, so just kind of stick with me a little bit. So it's usually, it corresponds with the cardiac cycle on an EKG. Okay, so if I have an EKG, and so the art line corresponds with the EKG. So again, please just go with me. Um, our line looks something like this. I'll explain it in one second. So right here you have an upward stroke and this is ventricular systole. And then you have your downward stroke, which is a drop in systolic pressure. This little notch right here, this little notch is very important. Um, that's your dichrotic notch, which is the closure of the aortic valve. And then the descending slope is the beginning of diastole. And then the very lowest part right here, which is the end diastolic pressure or preload. So again, we go up. That's your upward stroke, which is the systolic pressure. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ventricular systole. And then your downward stroke, which is the drop in systolic pressure the little notch, which is the dichrotic notch. And then it descends a little bit more, which is the um, beginning of diastole. Your lowest point is the end diastolic pressure or your preload. You, this is how your art line should look and it should correlate with your EKG. It will come after your QRS on an EKG. So if this EKG were to keep going, um, here would come our our waveform i'm sorry i'm not the best artist but hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what to look for so it's important as nurses that you always monitor the waveforms on your arterial uh monitor so a couple other things that you need to know about this is if you ever hear the terminology damped i'm damped um it basically it means that something is kind of occluding that artery or the tubing is not right. Or so if here's the little catheter, here's the tubing, um, here's my monitor, here's my pull, my transducer. Um, there it could be that I have a kink. It could be fluid. It could be a clot in there. Um, if I flush it and do a square wave test, and I make sure that I'm good, in order to make sure that I'm not either under damped or over damped. If I was to be over damped my waveforms would look something like this and so my blood pressure would be very very or a lot higher and it could just be that there's air in the tubing the longer tubing it's loose um if i am over damped it looks something like this and there's not a dichrotic notch that's one of the easiest ways to tell there's not a dichrotic notch um, blood pressures are falsely lowered, whereas this one, they are falsely elevated. And it could be, again, because of a clot, um, a little air embolism, some type of the catheter, some type of obstruction right here or in the tubing. So if you can just flush it and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, so it's just important to know if you're over damped or under damped to get 
because you you'll know that this is not an accurate blood pressure reading so if you see this and the monitor is telling you that the blood pressure is 60 over 40 and um your map hypothetically is 30 don't treat this because you would be over damped so fix the problem and make sure that you have a um a good waveform which is similar to that okay so that's imperative when it comes to monitoring art line art lines so a little bit of a recap um a lines art lines um it's usually in hemodynamically unstable patients um, not everybody gets one you got it's usually somebody who's on pressors or you got to make sure that you're monitoring that um, their blood pressure closely you got to make sure that it's leveled because that way you get accurate readings you don't want that transducer to be too high or too low you got to make sure that you're leveled um, and you monitor you have to monitor the waveforms um, is it a good looking I'm gonna quit trying to draw for y'all is it a good looking waveform or um, is it peaked? Okay, so, or is it over damped? So you gotta just make sure that you know the basic idea of how the waveforms look so you know what to monitor for, so you know that the blood pressure is accurate. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you want to just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.